Next thing I want to do is prepare the intake manifold to go back on. Yours should not look like this. It should not have a cork gasket on it. Um, it shouldn't have silicon on it. So we're going to peel this away. Hopefully the intake is still actually okay. I want to be careful too that um, stuff doesn't fall into those intake runners. Uh, I'm just noticing here that that one there is quite badly split. Uh, we've got new ones of these, so these are a throwaway item. We want to peel them out. They're quite, um, they don't feel soft at all anymore. Okay, so this is what typically happens to these manifolds. If you look closely around here, you can see that the surface of this is quite wrecked. Um, this usually comes from severe overheating, which look, the car did blow a head gasket. And then what also we'll find is that um, often if this is too badly melted away, um, we don't we don't have a straight surface. To me, this looks like it's salvageable. So I'm just going to attempt to clean this up a little bit here. Just wanna get a bit of a rag in here. Um, so when I clean it up, that we don't get um, stuff that goes in there. Make sure it's a rag that when you pull it, it's all gonna come out. We do not wanna leave a rag in there. Now this isn't a normal step, um, you know, nine times out of ten this will normally be quite good. I'm just going to really start with a scraper and just see if I can get some of that melted plastic out of the way. What I'm happy about is that we've still got two shoulders that the gasket can run between. Sometimes it's completely melted away. So I've just got a little bit of a sanding block here. Um, I'm using some 800 grit. I don't want to go anything too aggressive. Now I just want you to remember that this actually isn't the sealing surface. You end up having the gasket that seals. What I don't want though is these sections that are protruding past this surface because they're going to stop it from sealing. Now it does still look a little bit ugly but I'm just using the old seal here. Even with the old seal in place um, the seal is sitting quite proud of the rest of this um, and it will make a good seal with the um, cylinder head. So I'm just going to make sure that there's nothing in these grooves here. We just need to make sure that um, no dirt or dust has gone down into these intake ports here. Now we can see here that the plastic is still a little bit damaged, but it is still all intact and we can get a seal in there. Um, I've just given it a light sand just to kind of smooth it all off. There's no protruding edges and I've put a straight edge across here and it's still quite flat. So. Now with the new seal, when you look at these, these are just a generic sort of a, a circle. There's nothing particular, particularly special about the way they sit. And we just want to feed them into that groove. Now what you should be feeling here is that that rubber sits uh, proud of that surface and that's what's actually going to be doing our sealing around there. I 
We don't need any silicon or anything on this. These rubber seals are fine on their own. So once you've got them all in, just double check that they're all sitting in nicely and that that rubber seal is just proud of the intake manifold surface. Now putting the intake manifold back on, we've got seven of these um, bolts here and you can see that the bolt holes actually have a metal uh, sleeve on there. Um, now this is to prevent over tightening and distorting this plastic intake. Uh, we'll still torque them up however, um, but you can see once this is pressed in that it will um, press up against this seal and make a, um, a good intake seal. You'll also notice as you go to put it in that there's these um, lugs on each end. Um, that just locate into a hole and um, line everything up nicely. Just be careful to make sure that these intake seals don't uh, fall out of the way as you're putting it back in place. So once I'm just holding it in place here, I'm just gonna run one of these bolts in quickly just to hold it there. Now it's quite difficult to see all these bolts going in. Um, I can't get the camera much closer, but um, they do line up quite nicely. Just putting the two ones on the end there and I'll do the other end. Now the three across the center here can be a little bit more tricky to get in because um, you need to hold it there. So unless you've got a magnetic socket, um, look, just grab a bit of paper or something like that so that it can just hold the bolt on while you run it in place. And just remember to take the piece of paper out. Just going to use it again on the next one. You can just move this out of the way if it's bothering you. I'm just doing this for speed now. Now these bolts all get tightened up to 20 Newton meters. I'm just gonna start from the inside and work my way out. I'm just going to do two passes at 20 newton meters just to make sure that it's um, tightened down evenly. Now with this intake now back in place, I'm going to just reconnect my fuel line because I never like open fuel lines. Now remember this, it um, is a spring-loaded end and they sort of sit up on an angle like this. So we'll just put it on and put it in. Make sure it's locked itself in. At least now I can't be spilling any fuel. Next thing I wanna do is put my throttle body back on. Now this seal here is still in good condition and surprisingly I didn't get a new one in my kit. Now before I put this throttle body back on, um, I'm just going to give it a bit of a bit of a clean up in here. Now you shouldn't really open these um, throttle plates. I found the cruisers to be uh, fairly fairly tolerant to this happening. Um, but look, if it, if they're really bad, you might want to try and open it up a little bit. Um, but this one's pretty good. But I'm just going to give it a, a bit of a squirt out. Just let it drip through. We'll just get rid of any deposits that we've got there. Just particularly around that, those opening edges, I just want it nice and clean. I don't want any sort of build up. And just the surface where the seal sits, I want that nice and clean as well. Okay, so just sitting the throttle body back in its position. And then we've got four of these X bolts to put in. I'm 
these two bottom ones are the easiest ones to line up first because once they're lined up, um, the others will go in quite easily. Now with that in place, I'm just going to put the PVC pipe onto the back there and then just put that clip on um, and that's now located itself. Now somewhere in the process of cleaning up this intake manifold, this little clip came off. So this one just sits on there and it will hold our fuel line in place. plug in these vent tubes. Just make sure they push in quite tight. Um, this little rubber connector here is another common point that cracks um, and get, can give you an intake leak. So now they're all sitting how they should.